Well, we know for a fact from uh, millions and millions of people having out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences that the biological brain is not the source of consciousness, that we continue beyond the biological brain. And that's important because in other words, we know we continue. And if we continue, then we should be planning for the rest of our existence. Everybody thinks of death as the end, and it's actually the beginning mm -hmm. of a whole new life for all of us. There's eight billion people on the planet, eight billion. And most of them have no knowledge whatsoever of what awaits them for the rest of their existence. Hey, welcome back to the Emmy Sing Podcast. Our guest today is William Buhlman. Um, if you're not aware, Bill was our very first guest on the show some six years ago. So very excited to have him back. Um, you know, Bill, you're probably familiar with his work, or at least many of you probably are. He's arguably the world's greatest living expert on the out-of-body experience. Um, so really a, a, a tremendous resource. Um, his first couple of books were picked up by HarperCollins. They're international bestsellers, been translated into 10 languages. Uh, those were uh, Secret of the Soul and Adventures Beyond the Body. After that, Bill uh, cha uh, trained the out-of-body intensive workshop at Monroe Institute for about a decade. Um, he's also released a couple more books in, in those years. Uh, those were Adventures Beyond the Body, or sorry, Adventures in the Afterlife, and uh, Higher Self Now. That latter book um, is also the basis for an online course called Our Incredible Journey, which we're now hosting on the Hemisync website. And in that course, um, he and his wife, Susan, uh, who's an end-of-life doula, um, have really thought through the death and dying process in tremendous detail. Um, and they offer people the opportunity to treat it as the tremendous platform for spiritual growth and transformation that it truly is. So I think you'll enjoy this. Here is Bill Buhlman. Bill, thanks for joining us once again. Uh, you were the very first guest on the show some six years ago. It's really good to have you back. Um, I was checking out the numbers on that first show, and it's one of the most watched episodes of all time, closing in on a 100,000 views stream. So I'm sure people are going to find this episode to be similarly useful and helpful. Um, we're, we're here today to talk about uh, your self-guided online course called Our Incredible Journey, which was inspired by your book, um, Higher Self Now. Um, we're very pleased to have it on the site. It is by far the longest runtime of any course we have on the site right now at, at over five and a half hours. Um, so to start, let me just um, start you off with a really simple kind of housekeeping question. Like, what do you think is the right length of time for someone to digest this material over? Ideally, I would say 21 days would mm -hmm. be a good amount of time um, because there is a lot of content in it. There's a lot of information um, that we provide, and it's a lot of thought-provoking uh, information that needs to be absorbed. So I would I would give it 21 days good to enough. allow it to really sink in. And there's also some a little bit of homework that should be done. For instance, a spiritual directive. Uh, ideally. So there, yeah, it takes some time to do it. In 21 days, they say, I guess, is about the length of time required to develop a new habit, right? That, I think that's true. Uh, I think uh, it does. That's about, uh, there's been some evidence to to support that as well. Mm -hmm. But I think 21 days is a great uh, timeline for to do the course. Cool. And so this course is about the death and dying process, as well as navigating the multidimensional reality of the afterlife, informed by your decades of out-of-body exploration, as well as that of hundreds, if not thousands of others. I mean, you've been documenting other folks' experiences for quite a long time as well. Yes. Um, and also the input of your wife, Susan, who's an end-of-life doula. So you guys have really thought through the death and dying process in a way that I, I don't think anyone else really has. I mean, folks don't, don't like to talk about this or even think about it very much. And that's unfortunate, right? It's very unfortunate because it's really uh, what are the two most important elements of our life? It's birth and death. I mean, these are the two transitional moments. And we've already covered the first one. So yeah. uh, uh, unfortunately, in our society, people don't like to talk about it. But yet it's a pivotal moment of a transition of consciousness that is seldom addressed because of fear or uh, indoctrination or the, all the elements that uh, that go into the death process that people just want to like bury their hands 
head in the sand. Uh, th this, I think it's a pivotal moment in our, our evolution, really. We have an opportunity to accelerate our spiritual growth in a very profound way, and maybe in a profound way that's beyond anything that we can fully understand at this point. Mm -hmm. But it's an opportunity for either having a uh, fear-based experience or a very powerful, profound spiritual experience. And I, I think that's why it's important. Thanks. And what are some of the things we've learned through, you know, over 40, 50 years of documenting and experiencing out-of-body experience, near-death experience? You know, what are some of the highlights that people need to understand and be aware of? Well, we know for a fact from uh, millions and millions of people having out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences that the biological brain is not the source of consciousness, that we continue beyond the biological brain, which is an important because uh, many societies still don't have a hard time accepting that. And that's important because in other words, we know we continue. And if we continue, then we should be planning for the rest of our existence. Everybody thinks of death as the end, and it's actually the beginning mm -hmm. of a whole new life for all of us. There's 8 billion people on the planet, 8 billion. And most of them have no knowledge whatsoever of what awaits them for the rest of their existence. That's which is mind blowing when you think about it. It's I mean, it's shocking. Yeah. And unfortunately the current belief systems and and I'd almost hate to say it, but the religions don't really prepare us for our continuing journey of consciousness. The terms heaven are meaningless. Everybody's going to heaven. What does that mean? There's no specifics. There's, there's, and that's what we need. We need true, we need knowledge based on observable observations that people have had. And there's millions of people who have observed the non-physical realities mm -hmm. and have come back to report upon them. And unfortunately, there's probably a few billion people who are not even aware of that. Yeah. So let's start with the concept of heaven. And, you know, you touched upon religion as well. And like, that's, I think, where a lot of people have their initial ideas of the afterlife formed, right? So let's talk a bit about, um, you know, how non-physical reality is shaped and formed, like what creates it? What, what, what is heaven exactly in terms of, you know, how most people think about it? Well, uh, from my 40 plus years of having out of body experiences, it's, a, it's an incredibly subtle, thought-responsive, multi-dimensional continuum. And the physical world that we find as being the center of the universe is not the center at all. The physical world, our entire physical universe, is the thin epidermis of reality. And when we die, we, we transfer consciousness to an inner part of ourselves, another part of ourselves which already exists in these inner dimensions. Everyone is multidimensional, but people don't explore that. They're so focused on the outer part of themselves, their biological body. They don't take the time to explore beyond it, which is, and now, of course, it's changing now. Many people are involved in heavy, heavily into meditation and moving their consciousness inward. And what we discovered is that these, there's billions, countless realities that exist just out of our electromagnetic field. And that's where people go when they die. There's these countless realities that are created by collective thought. And when people die, they go to the reality that resonates with them, often to a reality that is part of their uh, loved ones who pass before them into this other realm. In other words, there's really no death. Mm -hmm. There's just a transformation, a transition of consciousness from the dense outer part of our, us to this more subtle, higher vibrational inner part of us. And that is where these other realities exist. And it's, it's amazing. It's incredible. And it's about time that this is discussed because death is an opportunity. It's not the end. It's an opportunity for us to enlighten and expand our ability to to enter a higher thought responsive realm mm -hmm. and it's it, it truly is an uh, an incredible at least in our lifetime a one-time opportunity yeah 
That's why it's important to let go of fears and to let go of negative programming and to let go of all the limitations that we place upon ourselves. And so these non-physical afterlife realities, they're thought responsive, um, like tends to attract like. So, um, you know, if you believe in, say, a Christian heaven, you'll probably go to a place where there are other people that believe in Christian heaven. Um, and I think the other important takeaway from what you're saying is that we can pre prepare for this now and have some of these experiences now um, while we're here in a physical body. And that journey is inward, right? It's, it's actually not outward, even though, you know, kind of conceptually we think that it's out there. It's actually within us. Absolutely. Um, and let me just kind of uh, think about, um, there, there was one other thing that you mentioned that I wanted to touch on. Um, what are you saying? Something about, um, oh, so, um, you know, the consensus realities that our thoughts form, um, you know, there, there might not be anything wrong with them. I mean, these might be very pleasant places to go. But I think the important point that you're making here is that um, if we're locked into those, where we we are not um, aware, cognizant of of uh, what our true potential is, um, because these these consensus realities are basically very much like the physical reality here, right? Yes, that, that's what I found most shocking. Yeah, was when I visited non physical realities, they were pretty much duplicates. Many of these were duplicates of the physical world. I know people have these expectations that are. Um, but people go to where they're comfortable. That's the bottom line. If you're mm -hmm. comfortable with your religion and you're comfortable with a certain kind of environment, that's the reality you will gravitate to yep. and limit yourself within. Right. I, I, I talk about this extensively in my book, Adventures in the Afterlife, um, where the, these consensus, it's not a matter of good or bad. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of, do you want to limit yourself to a single reality when there are maybe billions of potential realities available that are maybe better, maybe more advanced, maybe more enlightened, maybe maybe more um, just more opportunities to grow and to learn. Right. And that's what's important here. Don't limit yourself by the first reality that you experience. So what makes us comfortable is actually what limits us. And what limits yeah. us really is um, our beliefs about things, uh, about reality, our attachments, um, and our our fears as well. Because the oh, absolutely. Really just, yeah. just the very thought that we are a bipedal humanoid is people take it for granted. But mm -hmm. that's a limitation yeah. we're putting on ourselves. I mean, consciousness doesn't have that true. I've said this many times that consciousness is not human. It's not dog or cat. It's <laughs> consciousness can take the form it needs to learn and grow. It uses various uh, external forms to achieve the goals it wishes to achieve, which is learning, growing, evolving through experience. And that's why we're here. We're learning through experience. And since we're immortal, and this is one thing that's not talked about. Everybody thinks this is like, a, many people think this is a one trip journey. Uh, you can't learn it all in one trip. Yeah, uh, And and it's, it's silliness almost to think that that's the case when there is so much going on and we are so much more expansive. And in other words, everybody's created a box for themselves. And then, and but you really have to work on yourself to work your way out of that and to expand your self awareness and start breaking through these limitations that we create the limitations ourselves mm -hmm. by what we choose to believe. And that's an important point. And maybe, maybe all beliefs are flawed. Maybe all everything that we've been taught since birth could be flawed because we're such and such an egocentric form-based reality and if soul is truly powerful and immortal imagine what the potential is beyond our expectations absolutely so, and you think of that potential and you name it as the higher self so that's kind of the uh soul that is liberated from these fears and limiting beliefs um from non-physical form um that's why your book is called higher self now and serves as the text of the course um, can you tell us a bit more about um, the higher self, what it is, kind of how you came to understand it? Well, to me, the higher self is a broad term. 
Mm -hmm. um, it means the highest spiritual aspect of yourself uh, that you can access. And I think that's the goal. Um, in, instead of thinking, I feel at death, it's highly important. And the, the, really, to put it in a nutshell, it's important to really begin focusing on the highest spiritual aspect of yourself as you approach this important transition that we unfortunately call death, because it's just a transition. Mm. And that's why I named the book Higher Self Now, which, by the way, is included in the course as a download, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. um, but that book was the premise for the entire workshop that I originally did at Monroe Institute. That was a, um, um, a four day course. And it now we've been transitioned into an online course that you're offering, mm -hmm. uh, giving it much more availability to many more people. So it, the higher self is really this part of ourselves that is so important that we begin to become aware of and begin to know we have the potential to connect with this higher part of ourselves. It doesn't matter the terminology. Mm -hmm. There's different words for it. Spiritual essence is commonly called. Um, it doesn't matter the term, but we have that ability. And the, and the, and the more that we focus upon that aspect, especially at the moment of transition, the, the, let's just say the, the better our transition will be. What are most people focused on? And at death, they're, they're fearful. They're not given really details. Mm -hmm. They're told these generic terms about heaven and uh, blah, blah. But it's, they're given very little true information about this multidimensional continuum they're entering yeah. and the thought responsive nature of reality and all the potential that's available. So this is so important that we begin to refocus from the denseness of matter and the fears of matter into this highest aspect of us. Yeah. So you don't do many of these interviews anymore. Um, and the reason for that is you had your own brush with cancer several years ago, and it's difficult for you to speak for an extended period of time. So <laughs> yes, thanks is. again for, for, uh, for uh, doing this with us. Um, but how did that kind of bring home the importance of, of, of preparing now for you? And what would you like to impart to our listeners um, in that regard? Well, I had st uh, stage four cancer 11 years mm -hmm. ago. It was head and neck cancer. Uh, it was quite serious. And um, it motivated me to write. Actually, while I was recovering, I wrote Adventures in the Afterlife. Mm. That's that was the motivation behind that book and also higher self now because it imparted to me the absolute knowledge that this transition is something that needs to be um, prepared for. I mean, it's not because many people never even think about it. Mm. And the more that we're prepared for our transition, uh, the more that we can be let's just say ready for the shift of consciousness that occurs at death so that we can go to the highest dimensional space that's, that is available to us and experience what, what many people call an enlightened transition. Yeah. And, you and have, I think this is probably the most important thing we can do in our lives, really. Um, everybody's focused on the material. I get it. We have to be focused on survival. Yeah. But as you get older, I'm, I'll be 73 soon. Um, you realize that this is a this is an opportunity. Death is an opportunity for an enlightened transition into a much higher state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. But it's up to us to take the reins. We can't depend on anyone else to do it for us. We have to take control over our state of consciousness and have our own goals in place. Mm. Because the consciousness is all we can take with us, really. Exactly. Nothing yeah. else goes. So and, that is why it's so important to focus on it. Yeah. And in terms of taking those reins, you have a very concrete action plan for doing that, which you call the spiritual directive. What are the key components of the spiritual directive? Well, the, I feel the spiritual directive is incredibly important because it gets you a chance to write down your, your spiritual goals. What do you want to do? For instance, how do you want to prepare? One of the, uh, it sounds weird, but one of the advantages of 
uh, cancer, which is what I had, is that it allows you time to think mm -hmm. and it, it allows you to start to plan for your this transition. And it's highly important. Uh, many people, for instance, have a, have a doula, which is commonly called the day of death doula, somebody that sits by you and aids you in transition. Um, that is a choice that each individual must make, but it gives you a chance to analyze your state of consciousness. What are your fears? You don't want to go to transition filled with fears and remorse or anger mm. or whatever. You got to let go of that stuff. It's like anchors that you're putting down. And these anchors will, let's just say, diminish our ability to go to higher realities in, the, uh, in our own personal afterlife. Mm -hmm. So the more that we can prepare, and the spiritual directive is a three-page document that you fill out and allows you to give some deep thought into your state of consciousness to prepare, to cleanse your own state of consciousness so you can get the highest state of consciousness available at your personal moment of transition, mm -hmm. which is important. It, you know, you got one shot in this life. This is like a leap of consciousness that we have an ability to do. Right. And most people don't take a leap. They take a, they just take a step into another realm. We have ability to take a leap, to fly at transition, not just enter into another realm that's a duplicate of the one you come from, mm -hmm. which many people do do. Uh, this, this is death in, in a way, if it's planned, is an opportunity for accelerated spiritual growth. And in terms of the planning and the spiritual directive, you actually identify seven steps. So one of them is to have allies, you know, folks that understand what you're trying to accomplish and are going to support that, um, especially if you're not, you know, fully um, in charge of your physical faculties. Um, and then th I thought this was interesting. You recommend creating a sacred space. Um, what does that involve and why is, it, why is that important? Well, I think it's important uh, to your mindset. Mm -hmm. Our external world affects our inner world because it affects our mindset. Mm -hmm. So it's important to be surrounded by what you feel is the highest vibrational things that will assist you in your death is a journey of consciousness. It's mm -hmm. an inward shift of consciousness from the outer dense body to an inner part of yourself. And, and we're multidimensional beings, mm -hmm. which is which is a big part of the importance of the course is that I go into this nature that it isn't just life and death. We are multidimensional beings and we can transition to higher aspects of ourselves. And it's important to prepare. For instance, your external world does affect your state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So you can surround yourself with positive, whether it be crystals or affirmations or just surrounding yourself with the highest vibratory energies that you can um, surround yourself with, it's all aiding your transition. But it's mostly coming from within. Yeah, It's about your own state of consciousness, being open-minded to connecting with your, many people call it your higher self, mm -hmm. connecting with the highest aspect of consciousness that you feel you can, you can connect with in this life. And it's it's a, it's really that it's a it's a golden opportunity. Yeah. People think of death at the end. Death is not the end. It's the beginning of just another phase of your existence, and it's an important phase because it, it gives you a chance to, in a sense, leap to a higher level of consciousness. Yeah. And so, um, if your goal is to you know reach your higher mm -hmm. self, you recommend writing that down, uh, making sure that your allies are aware of it. Um, yes. Yeah. So that's part of the absolutely of the have a yeah. written plan of transition. Mm -hmm. Have your what is your written plan, and have allies that will assist you. Mm -hmm. Have have people around you who know what your intention is. My intention, for example, higher self now, is one example of a plan transition. It's your affirmation to go to the highest aspect of yourself, whatever that may be for you. Mm -hmm. And surround yourself with people that will support your intention for yeah. your transition. It is super important because I know it comes from you, but if you can have support along the way, that's very helpful. Yeah. And, and many people don't. 
Most people are surrounded by people that are, let's just say, obsessed with the physical body. Yeah. And with uh, weeping, gnashing of teeth, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, Airing grievances. Physical aspects. <laughs> and that's the last thing. I mean, you're leaving right. that behind. Yeah, you have to yeah. remember at death, none of those things matter anymore. Right. And so that all impacts someone's, you know, emotional state and vibrational frequency, which you talk about as being important. And like, yes. here's, here's kind of a question that I think about sometimes. So, you know, I've seen some llamas and teachers talk about, you know, uh, you know, the dying process, you have to, you know, be very focused, you have to try to maintain your um, awareness of, you know, a mandala or, or uh, whatever else. Other teachers talk about death being as easy as falling off a log. Like, how do you think about it? <laughs> How do you think about it? Is dying easier or hard? I think we I mean, make it we make it what it is. Yeah. I think dying is easy because we're just reconnecting with what we truly are. Mm -hmm. But it's all in our mindset. Um, that's why I believe in affirmations. Yeah. At my moment of transition, I'm gonna be chanting my own phrase and people gonna like hire self now. Yeah. Or whatever that means to you, you have to create. Everybody has their own own idea of what that means to them. I mean, uh, in many Buddhist traditions, they talk about this. Focus yeah. on the highest spiritual aspect of yourself. Yeah. Be and use the terms that resonate with you. I use higher self now, mm -hmm. as because uh, I feel that covers it for me. But if it could be other things for other people. The point is, is don't be fixated on the biological body. Yeah. Don't be fixated on the astral body. Fix, fixate your mind and your focus on the highest aspect of yourself you can possibly feel you can maintain. That's, and, I think, the major key. Yeah. And you also recommend recording that. So whatever your mantra may be, if it's higher self now, great. You record it. You can uh, play yes. it yourself or you know have your allies play it for you in case you're not able to chant yourself you can put it to music and you, you can put it to hemisync whatever floats your boat right um, i think, I that's, think that's important to have uh, yeah. support for yourself create your own support don't you? we all many of us can't depend on others mm -hmm. we have to depend on ourselves we have to be prepared i think making a personal cd of chanting to, to guide you to your highest aspect of yourself Whatever that means to you, to mm -hmm. me, it's higher self now. Yeah, that is the the primal. Uh, but that to me is what I would use. And you could put, you could create your own, make thirty example, put your own music behind it. Absolutely. I mean, you don't have to buy these things. Mm -hmm. As for many people are making their own, and higher self now is a very powerful statement to your consciousness. Yeah, it's going to your I am going to experience the highest aspect of myself I can achieve, essentially in this lifetime mm -hmm. and higher self now, I think kind of sums that up and repeat it, make a tape of it and then mm -hmm. have it playing by your bedside. Mm -hmm. It just very lightly, maybe. Yeah. And you can help yourself that way. But it's important to saturate your mind with you. It's all about intention. Yeah. And that's what's important here. You, the last thing you want to be is fearful. That is, and unfortunately, many people, my, my father, for instance, he died very fearful. Mm. He was not a, a spiritual person. Mm. He didn't even know any concepts of it. And he died in fear. I know this. I'm sure that's and common. It, it's, it's very common. Yeah. And a lot of people, because they don't really know anything, and they're hoping that their beliefs are accurate, but they don't know. So take the reins yourself. Don't depend on some other belief system to provide you with the afterlife. Create your own. That's what's important here. You're taking the reins and you're creating your own affirmations. You're creating your own intention. You're, you're eliminating your own fears. That's what's important here. This is not a belief system. Yeah. This is about each individual taking control of their state of consciousness at this pivotal, critical moment we call, unfortunately, death, which is nothing more than transition. Mm -hmm. And then we take the action to go to the highest aspect of ourselves we can achieve in that lifetime. That's yeah. what the whole course is about, yeah. really.
and okay. and not depend on any external. Don't depend on monks or any external or belief systems. Yeah, most belief systems are flawed or totally false anyway. Create your own transitional method through your own. You could create your own affirmations and have them play them by your bedside, mm -hmm. which I recommend. Lovely thoughts. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and so just some concluding thoughts, since I know we don't have, you know, a whole lot of time um, with your voice. But, um, you know, you talk about the importance of severing the ties to the body um, at the time of transition. We've already talked about a bunch of ways that you can do that. Um, some others that we haven't touched upon are um, the importance of seeking forgiveness, of offering forgiveness. Um, and you also recommend cremation, uh, which is interesting because that's not common in the West. Um, it's much more common in the East. But why yeah. is that? Um, I think it eliminates any remaining attachments to the body. Mm -hmm. Most people, unfortunately, are very attached to their biological body, even yeah. though it's a very temporary vehicle. Your yeah. body is nothing but a vehicle of consciousness, a yeah. temporary vehicle of consciousness that you are you come in temporarily and you're leaving and then you move on to another vehicle of consciousness, whether it be your astral body or your mental body. Mm -hmm. There's other vehicles of consciousness that you are actually using right now, but that's why it's important to learn about these things. Yeah. Everyone is transitioning to a different vehicle of consciousness. And, the, and it's important to let go of the old one. And one of the best ways to let go of all attachments, it's about letting go of attachments. Yeah. Many people after death, unfortunately, if I've witnessed this firsthand in my out-of-body experiences, people, there's unfortunately, many people are still attached to their old life and their own, let's just say their old life. And they hang around yeah. their loved ones. They hang around. I mean, it's it's a sad state because yeah. they're not spiritually moving forward. Yeah. They're not, they're just they're just re reliving the same day. And unfortunately, this is more prevalent than most people think. Yeah. It's important to cut loop, to cut the old away so we can move spiritually to a higher level of consciousness. And you have to let go of the old to move forward. Yeah. And that's why it's so important, I think, that the very act of cremation is a symbol of letting go of the old. You're letting go of all that. That is over. Yeah, it may have you had you had loves, you had a life, but that's you're moving on. Let it go and move to a, the highest level of consciousness you can achieve in that lifetime. That's what this is all about. Moving, really letting go of the past, because that is the past. Your mm -hmm. body is the past. It's over. And moving to a higher level. And unfortunately, millions and millions of people don't do that. They cling to the what I call the etheric double and hang out near their biological bodies. Yep. They, 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 they're so obsessed with their bodies they can't let go of it, or they're attached to their their ex life, which no longer is their life. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn to let go of that stuff. And let's just say, cremation of the body helps yeah. us, I think, in that regard. And many people believe that. The Buddhists believe it. I mean, it's not. It's a very common philosophy of letting go of the old, so you can move ahead to the new. Yeah. It's to me, it's that simple. I have to get started planning my Viking funeral. That's always resonated with me. I'm going to put that in my spiritual directive. Yes. Um, yes. A good Viking funeral is always That's the good. way to go. Yeah. 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 But so, it's also exciting because you're taking, you're no longer the victim of death. Mm -hmm. You're the, you're the creator of your new life. Think about that's a huge, that's a massive difference in consciousness. Oh, Most yeah. people go to their death fearful. And I understand they don't know for sure. They've heard all this stuff about hell. And and let's face it, all of us have done things in our lives that we're probably not <laughs> proud of. One way, like everyone yeah. has. Yeah. And in the back of your mind, that's why my father was so terrified of death. He yeah. was terrified of death because of some of the things he had done in his life, including killing some people in World War II. Yeah. I mean, he was a soldier in World War II. Yeah. And I mean, and that was hanging on him. Yeah. And he was terrified of what would happen to him. 
Yeah. You have to, that's so important to let go of that because you're taking that mindset of guilt with you. Yeah. People forget that. If you are guilty or you feel guilty for anything you've done in your life, and most of us feel, we know we've all done things we're not proud of in our, especially if you live to be as old as I have. Um, and you have to let go of that. That's part of the training. That's part of the course. Yeah. Of. You have to examine your life and then start to give yourself a break. Mm. Release yourself of all your own um, guilt and fears because it's over. You can't change it. You're not going to change it. You can send love to the situation. Mm. You can try to balance it all you can. You have to go. You have to live live and focus on a higher part of your continuing journey yeah because all that is over and unfortunately people still live in the past on uh, many of them and they beat themselves up over things they could have done or might have done or and we have to it takes a while that's why it's important that's why i say 21 days mm -hmm. this is a course that requires a lot of thought yeah because you have to examine yourself and do it clearly and objectively. No, you can't sugarcoat this course. Right. Or you and won't you know, get what you need out of it. Totally. This course is about examining yourself partially and then letting go of the crap that you still hold on to. So you can move ahead and move to higher levels within yourself. It's very important. Absolutely. Self-examination is a big part of this um, this this online course. Yeah, and you thought through it very clearly um, in great detail. And I think that self-examination um, is also part of what allows for some grace because that's ultimately what we need to let go, right? I mean, we all have to- Yeah, we have to, yeah. I mean, grace. acknowledge it. If you're yeah. holding on people, everybody's holding on to something. Mm -hmm. I should have did this. I should have did that. It's human nature. We, we all do it. We've all made mistakes in our lives. Just accept it. Yeah, I could have done better there, but I forgive myself. Yeah. Yes, and that's the key. I forgive myself. I was I was not as informed or enlightened as I should have been at that point. Yeah. But now I know better. I forgive myself for being stupid. Mm -hmm. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. We make stupid decisions because most, most of the time we don't know any better. Yeah. And now it gives you a chance to examine your own life and go, I forgive myself for these things that I've done that I could have done better and let go. And then not only forgive yourself, but then let go. Don't hang on to it anymore. Cause that's what limits us in the afterlife. People really limit. There's no external force. And this is important. There's no external force limiting our progression after death. It's only us mm -hmm. and our, the way that we perceive us. And the, the thoughts that we have about us. And it's important that we, that's why this course makes you think about your past and how you can resolve these issues and move, move beyond them. And just flat out forgive yourself and forgive others that may have, um, you feel may have done things about you. You got to let all that go. And just, it's important if you want to move to a higher state of consciousness within yourself which is what this course is really about. The higher state of consciousness you can achieve, the, the, the more, let's just say, the highest level of reality you will experience. So it's all about your own inner work. Mm -hmm. And that's why this is 21 days. Well stated. Um, once again, the course is called Our Incredible Journey. Uh, Bill, do you have any upcoming events you want to tell people about? Uh, no, I'm working on a new book. Mm -hmm. um that is still some ways out but um other than that uh, i like to invite people to visit my website astroinfo.org mm -hmm. where this course and uh, my other course is um now available and uh, uh that that's i'm always trying to update it a little bit here and there so that's like a living entity that's always changing so I would, and that's the number one thing I think would be invite them to my website, Astro Info. Cool. Thanks, Bill. Um, so folks, if you have a question, please leave it in the comments. Um, we'll try to get back to you. Thanks for listening. Bill, thanks again for your time. Really appreciate oh. it. Be Thank well. you. Bye-bye.